Welcome to A Quest for Metal. Today we're ranking enslaved albums from my least favourite to my favourite. Before I do, pop yours down in the comments below and yeah! Uh, for Enslaved, they have a near flawless discography. I say near because there's two albums that have filtered me fucking hard. Yeah, there's two albums that I just can't really get my teeth into and I can't say that they're bad because like musically they, they're pretty good pretty impressive. It's just, for me, I just can't break through the walls. It's kind of like Gorguts' Obscura. I just, I just can't get through to it. Can't get through to it. So let's rip the band-aid off, because one of these albums, I think Loudway had like number one, the best enslaved album. I'm pretty sure Metal Trenches had it as his favourite enslaved album. So maybe controversial, but let's get in with a list of my least favourite. And uh, this isn't the one that people love. The next one is, but Monumention is my least favorite Enslaved album. This is kind of when they ramped the experimentation up to fucking 100. You know, it was kind of like that on Maradrum. Um, not really like that before that. Kind of pure, well, not really pure, but more black, you know? And then from Maradrum onwards, I'm probably saying that wrong, um, they kind of ramped it up to experimentation standards. And this album is just pure fucking experimentation. And this is the, probably the Enslaved album that sounds the least like Enslaved. You throw this on to a lot of people and they'd be like, what the fuck is this? Like, and that's what I was like. Especially the album cover doesn't even feel Enslaved. Like, nothing about this album screams Enslaved to me. You know, it's not brutal like some of the others. It's not as interesting the melodies like some of the later ones. It's in this weird period where it's just... They're trying to find the footing, and they don't quite find it until the next album, in my opinion. They don't quite find it until the next album, which is a fucking masterpiece, but that's coming up later in the list. So yeah, this is coming in last just because it's just, it just feels too, like they don't know what they're doing. It feels like they don't know what they're doing, so this is why it's last for me. Now here comes a controversy. Next up, Maradrom. Yeah, this one is my second least favourite and the only two albums that I don't really like by Enslaved. This is the album before Monumention. This is when they kind of went from Viking-y black metal to proggy black metal. This is another kind of transitional phase album and people love this album because it's kind of mixing the best of both worlds but in my opinion it just doesn't do it very well. And this is going to get some get some shit, but this is just fucking opinions. Yeah. This album, I died in this weird French speaking sections at the first song. The first song is just so fucking weird. It has amazing sections in. The really fast section, you know. And then it just kind of fucks it up again. And I'm like, what are you doing? The first three albums are flawless. Like, all the way through. At four, even. This one just kind of, I don't know, it has amazing parts. And then they fuck it up with some weird shit. And I love prog, but I don't know. I mean, I'm in that fucking camp where I like black metal to be a certain way, and this kind of just fucking doesn't do it. But also, Opeth's one of my favorite bands, so I'm in kind of a weird spot. <laughs> like, I should love this. I should love this, but I think they have so many better albums than this, where they mix it better and they have more prog, you know, more prog in. I think in times they do it way better. Issa, they do it way better. Ruan or Ruan or whatever, they do it way fucking better. Every other album, they do it way fucking better. This one, I don't understand why people love it. I can't get into it. It feels like a mismatch of both genres doesn't feel like it blends together nicely. Whereas all the other ones feel like they blend together nicely. This one feels like they just threw both of them together. So, yeah. Fucking hot take there. And probably gonna piss people off, but this is my list, so fuck you. Next up is Vertebrae. This onwards, I really enjoy the albums. So from this album onwards, all these albums are fucking fantastic. As I said in the intro, Enslaved doesn't really have bad albums per se, just those two I'm not really a fan of, but everything else, and they have a lot more else, is fucking fantastic. And this is one of them. But the reason this is a bit lower, Vertebrae's a bit lower, the sound on this album is a bit fucking weird. A lot of people have this kind of last, and I can kind of understand why. But at least, you know, it feels like Enslaved. I throw this on, and it's like, holy shit, this isn't Enslaved. This feels like, 
like the Isa, it feels like Rita, or however you say it. It feels like all those albums. They all have a kind of same sound, and this has that same sound. It's just the design-wise, the production on it is really fucking flat. You know, everything sounds murky and flat. But what you do to enjoy this album properly, if you think it's the worst album, it's not, crank it up to 10. Put your volume really high, and then the album becomes so much heavier, so much better. You know, crank this volume up, and then Vertebrae just becomes amazing because it has some fantastic songs on it, cool singles. Uh, I think one of the first singles I ever heard was on this album. You know, one of the first, not the very first, but one of the first Enslaved songs I heard on this album. Great songs, it's just murked down by shoddy production, so that's why it's coming in a bit last. Next up is E, one of the later albums by Enslaved. And this, I uh, everyone loved this, you know? And I think it's a fucking great album. I just think others are way better, which is why, again, it's lower down on the list, but it's still a fucking fantastic album. I just think, like, some of the kind of instrumentation-y kind of sections, like the the horses, the sound of the horses, and the galloping and shit on the first song. Not a big fan, you know, not a big fan. It feels kind of filler-esque uh, when it does shit like that, but can't knock it, can't knock it. Still a fantastic enslaved album from start to finish, but it just lacks kind of edge and bite that some of the others have. You know, we'll get to some of the ones which I fucking love, which have punch and bite below the lights. Fuck, that's some bitey ass album. This one, not quite bitey, uh, but it's also not quite as catchy as like Ritter or anything like that, in my opinion. So it is falling down a little bit, but The River's Mouth, holy fuck, that song's fucking amazing. That song's awesome. And Access to the World, so you know, has some catchy ass songs on, but it just, for me, you know, falls, falls a bit short. Next up is the latest album, Utgard. This is a much better album than any of those, I think. Much better album. The singles that got dropped, so fucking good. I love those on the album. Some people didn't like the kind of weird experimentation uh, for some of them, but I fucking loved it. I'm not gonna be able to say this right, but Jetta Greta has gotta be one of my favorite enslaved out, uh, songs ever fucking made. I adore that song. I love his singing in it. I love his screaming in it. I love the fucking music video. That song is amazing. Fires in the Dark is fucking awesome starting off the album. Fires in the fucking Dark, hell yes. This album is amazing, but I do think it's top heavy. You know, the first couple of songs, so fucking good. Homebound, awesome as well. But the latter half um, is still really fucking good, but it does kind of slow down a bit. I think it slows down a bit in the second half, which is why it's not quite as powerful as some of the other albums, because it does have a weaker second half than first half, for me, personally. Uh, when I was listening to it with my friend and they got fucking bored, uh, I don't think they liked the album at all, to be honest. And you all know who that is. Whenever I say my friend, you know, you know who fucking that is. But, yeah, this album, uh, it's great. It's great. It just, it's just a bit slower in the second half, so even though I love this album, it's a new album, I love it, but it's gotta go, gotta go kind of mid, mid-tier, you know? It's great, but it's just not as catchy or punchy as some of the others we'll get to. Just like the next one, In Times. This is more like it. This has the edge. This is what I'm talking about. From here on out, those are good. From here on out, Fucking fantastic, starting with In Times. Holy shit, has the intensity of like Issa and um, Axis. I can't remember how you say that, but that one is fucking intense as all hell. And this feels like that, feels like kind of a continuation of that. And I love it to bits. Building with Fire, holy shit. There's only like six songs or something on this album. So they're quite long, the proggy, exactly what Enslaved should be. I fucking love this album. It's one of my favourites, and it's only here. So that's how good Enslaved are. It's only here. I have nothing but praise for, like, most of these albums. Like, even the two ones I didn't really like, still give them fucking credit. Still give them fucking credit. But this one is mind-blowing. And if you have this even number one, I would applaud you. So, fuck. Great album. Next up, Blood Helm. You'd think I'd have this a bit higher, you know, because I love my black metal, it's one of my favourite genres, I love the raw, fucking intense black metal. But this one, compared to, say, like, Frost, and, say, like, the first album, which I don't know how to fucking say the name, um, it kind of feels more like a standard affair, you know? It feels more like a standard affair viking -y black metal album, similar to, like, a Bathory, but not, eh, not quite as good as, like, 
Blood for Your Death or Hammer Heart. But it's still, it's up there. It's fucking up there. It's still fucking amazing. But, you know, it just, it feels like a standard black metal Viking album. And it's enslaved, so it's fucking awesome. I still love it to pieces, but it just lacks kind of memorable shit like Frost does. Lacks memorable shit like Eld. So it's just, it has to go, it has to go high because I love the sound of it, love the songs in it, but I couldn't fucking name any of those fucking songs from the album. I play it in full, and I'm like, that was a great album. Which song was my favourite? Don't fucking know. <laughs> they were all good. It's one of those kind of albums you just throw on. It's great. But it's not like, that song is fucking amazing. You know what I mean? It's one of those albums that just kind of blends in. So, for that, I can't, I can't put it higher than, say, like, Below the Lights or Issa or any of those. Because they have way more interesting things going on in the album. So, it's going here. Next up is Rune. Is that how you say it? Rune? <laughs> like the fucking, fucking Nordic runes? Is that what it's like? Anyway, this album is fucking amazing. This is another step up. Another fucking step up. Those were masterpieces. This is, I don't know, 10 out of 10s fucking beautiful albums. Pieces of art. Path to Veneer. Holy shit. The title track. You know, so many good, long, meaty songs with catchy fucking riffs. And this feels like a counterpart to another album which we'll get to next. These two albums feel so similar, but one kind of just has a little bit more edge, which we'll talk about in a second. This one lacks it a little bit, but they kind of feel like a two-parter album, album-wise. Both heavy, both catchy. Riffs kick your fucking teeth in. So, yeah, love this album. And the next one is Issa, you know? This is a fan favorite. People love this one. People have this, like, top as well. And I can understand why. I can fucking understand why. Because it's exactly what he said for Rune, but just kind of knocked up a little bit, bit more catchy. Some of the songs have a bit more, you know, oomph to them. And it's fucking awesome. Isa, Isa, Ascension, Return to Yggdrasil. Holy shit, Return to Yggdrasil is fucking amazing. It's one of the best enslaved songs. And this album is one of the best enslaved albums. Just happens to be here for personal preference, but... You know, again, you throw this top, good job. Now for a weird placement, Rittier. You would have thought I'd have this a bit lower, seen as though a lot of my list, like the newer kind of albums are a bit lower down, mid-tier albums are kind of higher up, aside from those two experimental albums. This one just, I don't know, it's just got its claws into me. The melodies in it, I just fucking, I, I love them. I love the melodies in this album. Thoughts Like Hammers. Thoughts Like Hammers is just has the best fucking melody ever. And Death in the Eyes of Dawn, you could just name off any song from this album. And all the melodies are catchy and it'll be stuck in my head. Like, the singing in it is beautiful. Again, it, it's weird that this is really high, because if you know me, it, like this is not typical for my kind of rankings. This doesn't kind of fall in line with the other ones I love, which we'll get to soon, but I don't know, I just love this one. I think this is 10 out of 10. You know, it's only here. Still a 10 out of 10. I adore the artwork. I adore the album as a whole. It's one of my favourites of all time. Fuck. You know, it's going here. Next one I have to read out. Axioma Ethica Odini. This album is one of the heaviest, one of the most intense and darkest albums. And also, it's the album that reminds me of Opeth, my favourite band. I think they were like on tour when... They got the ideas for this album, so maybe Oprah have kind of rubbed off on them. Because this album has just like a Ghost Reveries kind of feel to it. It really does. You know, re-listen to it. It has some fucking Oprah flares in there. And I fucking love it. You know, I love that shit. My favourite band. So obviously, I love that shit. And this feels like that. It feels like that. It's got the heaviness and the beauty. Less of the experimentation shit. More just beauty mixed with darkness, which sounds fucking edgy. You know, but it works so well and it's dark as fuck. One of the darkest albums, one of the heaviest albums and one of the fucking best albums. So next up, Below the Lights, in my opinion, the best of the newer kind of enslaved prog metal albums. This is the best. This is the pinnacle. This is the top. This and Axioma are kind of level and level. Both one of the darkest, both heavy. But Below the Lights just, I don't know, the melodies as well. The melodies are just too good. 
And the first song, I can't remember what it's called, uh, as Fire Swept Clean the Earth, is a masterful song. Masterful song. The fucking acoustic parts in some of these songs, the fucking clean sections, the screaming, the interesting melodies, everything about this album is flawless, it's dark, it's evil, you feel like going to the bowels of hell, but it's also it's a nice journey, because it's prog. So it's nice and also evil because it's black. So this is the perfect mixture of both. So if I had to give out an album for people who wanted to know what Enslaved was, you know, or is, sorry, I'd give them Below the Lights and I'd give them, oh, should I give them Axiom? Because that's more like Opeth. I'd give them Below the Lights and I would give them, fuck, this is hard. Like any of the others, fuck it, writ it. You know, I'd give them writ it. That and this, because that's kind of like the lighter album and then you've got the heavier album. Given both of these, you'll know what Enslaved is all about. But now we come to the actual fucking flawless era, starting with Eld. This album is, it's like the Vikingy black metal thing, like Blood Helm, but so much more interesting. Starting off with 793, like this long fucking song, starting off the album with like a 16 minute song. What are you doing? But it works so fucking well. The fucking interesting parts of the middle set the set the song up. It's a masterpiece. There's beautiful instrumentals. There's incredible screaming. The screaming on the first three albums are proper, like black metal, proper black metal, and it just works so well. This is one of the folkiest ones, kind of like Blood Helm. One of the folkier ones. It's one of the more interesting albums, and it's just fucking awesome. Awesome from start to finish. One of my favorites. So it's coming in. At number three. So number two, we're going back in time. Frost. This is the first enslaved album I ever heard. So you know it's going to go fucking high. Love the cold dark atmosphere. Love the intense shrieking. Love the singing in it. My two songs, the first songs I've ever heard by enslaved on this album. Loke and Frost. From either Brutal Legend. No, it was Brutal Legend. Yeah, Brutal Legend. Heard both of those songs from Brutal Legend. And I was like, this is crazy dark. Need to listen to this album. I did, and it floored me. Every song's a banger, every song's fantastic. Fenris is fucking amazing. Yggdrasil's so interesting. It's weird for them, but it's interesting, and I love it. And Jotunblood, everything is so just cool on this album. It's a cool, interesting black metal album. And if you love shit like, you know, fucking Mayhem Buzz and Dark Throne, whatever, whatever the fuck you want. Well, more like Baffery. If you like old Baffery, you need to check out Frost. You need to check out Eld, and you need to check out my number one pick, the very first fucking album. Where I'm, I'm gonna butcher it. Viking Le... Viking Veldi. Viking Liga Veldi. Yeah, I've definitely butchered that. Fucking amazing. Flawless album. It was on, um, I think, Death Like Silence Productions. Um, is that what it was called? Euronymous's label. You know, so this is one of the fucking pioneers. One of the first kind of black metal bands. And back then, they did it better than Mayhem. They fucking did it better than Mayhem. They did it better than some of the other fucking peers. Because they were doing proggy shit back then. And you may say, oh, they started with Monumention. They started with Mara Drum. Fuck you. They didn't start with Mara Drum. They started with the very first fucking album. Have you seen the lengths of these fucking songs? Have you seen the interesting passages? Like keyboard shit in here? What are you fucking talking about? It's prog from the very fucking beginning. If you listen, it's prog from the very fucking beginning. This album is proggy shit without... Without losing the edge and the heaviness. This is the perfect Enslaved album. It's proggy without being silly. It's fucking intense. It's dark. It's everything I love. The black metal shit is amazing. It's it long. Songs are fucking long. And it doesn't, it doesn't lose its edge. Like Monumention, Monumention does. You know, it doesn't lose its edge. So for that, this is the perfect Enslaved album. The best Enslaved album, and it's my personal fucking number one. So that's my Enslaved ranking. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and didn't get too triggered. Let me know in the comments below your favourite Enslaved album, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.